David Bock is joining us here in the studio. Of course, it's been, um, to say the least, uh, a tumultuous time for you for the last few weeks with the, the situation with City Wing. Uh, and I, I thought we'd just let the dust settle before getting hold of you to have a chat to. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, first of all, we heard that it was almost saved and, and, and things, because obviously that, we, everyone remembers what's happened, what yeah. we're up to, mm -hmm. but it was that close, was it, to, to saving the airline on that Friday when you pulled the plug? Obviously not an airline pull, but uh, well, I, ha yeah. I had to differentiate between that one. This, yeah, this thing about a virtual airline, and what, mm. so how, how do you describe yourself then? I guess a virtual carrier would have been fine with that. I mean, we're basically a ticket seller. We've purchased um, aircraft to basically fly on our behalf. Yeah. So we basically purchased the space, I guess, and then we sold the space. So we took the risk and paid them revenue for each flight they did so they knew they had guaranteed profit. Okay, so that's Van Air Europe is one thing, and then City Wing sits above that selling the tickets. Yes. So it was Van Air is one thing there that's okay, but you couldn't continue. Well, in principle we could, but the problem is is finding a supplier that could provide us with airplanes at the right price to make the business work. Because uh, Van Air were out because they they lost their license, had they? Or they lost their UK license. They could still fly within Europe, but they lost their UK route license permit. And yeah. so while they were still doing that to get their permit back. In principle, we had to then go and find another aircraft or aircrafts to fly for us. Van Air were fly, supplying three aircraft uh, to fly the different routes that we were operating at the time. And finding that those aeroplanes available is very, very difficult, um, as it proved to be. Uh, so from a contingency planning purpose, you can't always have a plan that somebody else is going to be there waiting on the doors because they need to be selling their aircraft as well to make sure they have a business. And you've been struggling to find anyone to fill in, hadn't, hadn't you? Well, yeah, because the 19-seat market, again, is that um, I guess because we built up such a good rapport that uh, they were p quite happy to make sure they made X amount of profit, whereas other companies coming in fresh to us, we hadn't built up that relationship yet, so they'll come in higher than what Van Air were. Okay. And therefore, our margins were really, really small, uh, and therefore, as soon as you bring in something more expensive, then the margin goes and you can't really run the business. And at 19, you weren't paying the, the airport, uh, the, the tax on the passengers and things that's, that's you do to the UK or from the UK from to the, the UK here but yeah. here to there it wasn't yeah. was that a big thing to keep the, the prices as they were then that sort of thing about the 19 seat model basically yeah it is that because uh, there's, there's people talk about regulation and things like that and saying well you were operating outside regulation reg, outside regulation and it, and it wasn't that we wanted to operate so operate outside of regulation I mean we were looking at things about getting an atoll for the company and there yes there would be a cost for doing that um, but the atoll doesn't apply to people flying from the Isle of Man to the UK, so there's actually no protection there anyway. Okay. And the actual, say for example, you take the EU compensation, the EU compensation is very clear that EU compensation sits with the airline. So there was no issue with ever the passengers in principle being not covered because there was an airline involved. Right. Can we just talk about that day in question then, that, that, that flight that went off to Belfast? Do you have any say in that? Is that completely, was that Van Air's decision to do? Uh, any, any operational decision always sits with the operator. We don't get involved. And it's very clear from the UK CEA that they don't want us to get involved yeah. in operational planning or operational decision making. Were you surprised they went? Uh, like, so the information I had um, was basically was that uh, they will review what information is available for them weather-wise and they will then make a decision whether it's safe to fly or not. And like I say, we can't decide what no. is because they have their operational criteria and I would expect them never to depart, not within criteria because you do get pulled up for it. And they've lost the losses. Are they going to get it back? Are they asking to get it back or have they just withdrawn this from the whole of the Isle of Man and the, the UK, I suppose? Uh, my understanding is they'll just look for work elsewhere within Europe. Right. Like I, say, I haven't been in contact with them the last couple of weeks because I've been very busy doing my, sure. my side of things, really. Now, everyone remembers that City Wing seemed to appear out of Manx too. Was that the same operation? Was that the same thing but under a different name? Uh, it actually worked differently. Ah. So it was a different business model. And uh, the whole concept was is that um, we had a management buyout from Manx too because the previous owner wanted to sell. And so the, the, it was basically my idea is that uh, I was sitting as MD at Manx too at the time. If I brought in another person who basically wished to buy into the business, actually my job goes. So therefore, it made common sense to myself that if I finance some capital for myself through, uh, like I say, uh, refinancing from the house, then I will then have some money to go into Manx too and then have a, you know, like I, say, I got together with a few other managers from the business and then therefore we put a proposal in that was accepted and therefore we actually formed a separate company. Uh, it, it was a different business model and also the other thing was is that we were very aware that Manx too is very much an Isle of Man brand and there were certain things that we were looking at outside of the Isle of Man and therefore the Max 2 brand wouldn't have been appropriate and therefore a generic brand would have been uh, much more appropriate. Okay. 
No, we better talk about people who have been caught up in the middle of this, your passengers, the people mm. who have bought tickets in good faith to, to travel and, and waiting now to find out how, when, and if they get a refund. Over to you. How, is that all? Is, I can't comment on that because that sits with the liquidator now, so all questions have to go to the liquidator. Right. I mean, from the only thing I could say is that there are insolvency laws on the Isle of Man, and that's basically the way we worked our business through. You had to pull the plug that day, I mean, you, you, otherwise you'd have been insolvent then? No. Uh, we could have continued a little bit longer, but it was, uh, if, if you read the press statement that we put out, it basically, we took the view that uh, we didn't have a new contract starting from the 25th of March, and therefore it wouldn't have been right to have sold seats then going that far forward And after that. people are out of pocket. I mean, obviously, yeah. some people are, are, are pretty angry, I suppose, about what's going on. What do you say to them? Well, I say, I can't say anything that's going to console anybody. It was the most... I guess horrible and heart-wrenching decision that us as sort of directors and managers sat around the table because we appreciate we're affecting everybody else. We appreciate that our decision is going to affect 10 jobs within City Wing. It affected another maybe 10 to 15 jobs within Rendezvous. Um, and then there's other sort of businesses that are going to be affected by it as well. So you've got all those that maybe relied on the Gloucester service because that's the only one going that way on a regular basis. Uh, Blackpool's the same. Um, so it's a, a horrible, horrible decision to have to make. But um, well, so that day and prior to it, I'd spoken to the UK CEA as to this is a situation, this is where we're at. I'd been speaking to Anne and uh, we'd contacted the government here to see what avenues was available for us to explore. I mean, long term, if we'd got through most probably to May, then after that we'd have been OK because then the TT revenue and then we'd have actually fulfilled the contracts through TT and therefore the actual credit to debtor side of things would have changed a lot. So how, how was the government? I mean, Anne Reynolds, obviously, you're the sort of person you'd be speaking to, I guess, most, but were they trying to help? Uh, they were very hopeful. We had all sat down and had a conversation with them, but the difficult thing, and I, I fully am aware, is that if we're going to be dealing with something from the government, um, they can't just give us money to keep going because that's not fair on any business that's in a situation like that. So therefore, they needed a mechanism whereby if we, they were to give us money, they actually had something in return. So we had assets, say, for example, in the hangar, but as soon as we'd basically... Say, for example, we took money from them, therefore the actual asset then comes off our debtor side. So therefore, actually, the balance or the, uh, the balance is affected is nil. But we actually need actual fresh cash in to actually to have achieved uh, continuing business. Have you been surprised how quickly they found plugs to fill the, the, the gap here for Belfast and uh, where else? The, 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 well, the Newcastle, Glasgow, Newcastle, Edinburgh. Right. Well, yeah, well, well, Edinburgh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. but we surprised how knows. quickly. And, those first two came in, Newcastle, wasn't it, and, and Belfast? If I was in the position that Anne was in, then uh, as soon as something had happened with City Wing, then I'd be putting my feelers out. So I would have expected her to have actually already gone to companies and said, OK, this is the situation on the Isle of Man. Um, what are the chances of you potentially fulfilling sort of, or covering these routes if... Uh, and do they get a sweetener? Happens? I mean, new airlines, don't they get tax breaks and free holidays and that uh, sort of thing? Um, that's not for me to say, but my understanding is, is everybody on the Isle of Man is treated exactly the same. So, so therefore, any company coming in to fly a route, say, for example, I formed a new company and want to go on Bristol, then actually the prices that EasyJet are having to pay the Isle of Man government, then I'd expect we'd, us to pay the same. There'd be no difference. Fine. But, of course, these aircraft are bigger than 19 seats, so mm. there will be an impact on this tax, if nothing else, for the, from being paid on both directions. Yes. So the Isle of Man government goes so in. We kind of offset it so that it basically was half and half. Yeah. And, uh, so it used to be not there at all, did it, both ways, until the UK government changed the rules. It. I mean, we've had this uh, information now, not only in Scotland, uh, I say, sorry, uh, Glasgow's coming back on mm -hmm. stream, but the news that Logan Air's looking at, well, it is definitely going Edinburgh. to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. are you, are you, uh, you know, you've done all the maths, as they say, on these <laughs> sort of things. Suddenly from having one airport in Scotland to two, is, is this a, a classic example of open skies not working, that people can come in and do anything they like? Uh, it, it's a tricky one for me to comment because I'm not sitting in Logan Air looking at the economics. I can only say from the economics from City Wing side, and there's certain things that we did. I, mean, I, can, I can be open and honest now, is that and people may or may not believe this, but actually Blackpool never made us a penny, and we did it purely for the benefit of the Isle of Man. Wow. Why would you do that for nothing? You're a businessman. It, be, yes, but um, again, people may or may not believe this, but we didn't actually run City Wing to make lots of money. City Wing was all about making just enough money so that we provided a service at reasonable fares. We don't say we were cheap because we were never in a position to be cheap fares. So we, we tried to provide a service. I mean, it, I guess a really good example for me would be if you take TT, is that we never ever ramped the fares up at TT like 
you more or less look at every other company that comes here is that you'll see 600 pound return fares and we stayed true to our top fare yeah. and yes we would have more fares at the higher end because we knew going from the Isle of Man off you might have nobody on a flight or two people on a flight mm. and so we obviously still had to cover our costs but it was never about ramping fares up to make a huge amount of profit. Blackpool's gone you, mm -hmm. you can't see another operator coming in there I mean it's a well, it's, a, it's an interesting operation anyway, isn't it? <laughs> a little sort of shack at the end to, to deal with yeah. passengers. Do you think that's, that's gone for good? It, it's, like I say, different people with a different business model might be able to make it different, make it more than we did, maybe. Um, when we were growing the numbers and this year, I would think that we might have made a contribution to the bottom line. It wouldn't have made a profit, but it would have made a contribution because we'd been slowly building the numbers up. And again, it, uh, there is a trust element in there is that when Blackpool Airport first came back, then people have got to get used to come or retrain themselves to come back through Blackpool because yeah. people have actually then got used to going through Manchester or Liverpool and it takes time to, to encourage people to come back and say, yeah, it's here to stay. Uh, last year we'd increased numbers, most probably by about 20%, and this year again I mean, we'd actually sort of just shout in our own laurels, I guess, is that for the first month of the year we actually had 20, sales 20% 20 ahead of where we were the previous year. And we'd sort of changed our marketing strategy and... Uh, it seemed to be working quite well. I remember the, under the Manx 2 thing, I mean, they tried uh, Oxford. I mean, in fact, it was almost exactly five years ago that was uh, trying. Then you had the uh, airport, the uh, hospital transfer thing for a while to Chester. Six months, things. that was. All these things, you try them out, but to, for whatever reasons. Well, for example, if you take Oxford and Leeds, that's another one that the Manx 2 operated, is that as soon as APD came in, then, the actually, taxes, the, 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 yeah, yeah. then actually the routes become unviable. Um, but again, on aviation, you're perhaps looking at well, you do look on really, really small margins and volume to try and actually generate the revenue or the profit. And as soon as you're adding £13 onto a return journey, everybody has their, their level. So you might, say, be prepared to pay £100 to go to Scotland and back. But actually, if it's £115, actually, you don't want to do it now. And so you'd find that there will be a drop-off point with some passengers dropping off. And therefore, the whole thing just becomes completely unviable. OK, well, we thank you for coming in today. What, have you got plans uh, anything <laughs> irons in the fire or are you looking for work or you know what what, what well what, i've got to try and find work like i say on a personal level and uh, i don't want to leave the island because my family's growing up here and i've got children going through their exam situation but what i do is very uh, unique to or what i did was very unique to the island man and therefore finding something that will fit my alleged skill set skill set skill set, <laughs> skill set yeah. is uh, not necessarily going to be so easy and i get that as well you never know. Well, right? you never know. I mean, we were doing quite a lot of things that may tie in. I mean, we did a lot of marketing for the Isle of Man, as an example. So maybe somebody might say, well, actually, you did a lot of marketing for the Isle of Man. Therefore, those skills could be used to market the Isle of Man, as an example, I don't know, through some company. And do you think the future with the open skies, I know, you know just speaking now outside the business, I mean, is, is it good or bad? Because we always hear these things that it should be more regulated by some. Yeah. And like the, the, the Channel Arms model and owning government's owning airlines, Arena, you know, I'd in have, Guernsey. And, and you have to take this as my own personal yeah. view and not the view of anybody else, really, sure. is that I wouldn't be against the Isle of Man having more control. Um, I lo this is just, a, again, mm. a personal view. I like the fact that Guernsey have got their own, in principle, company there, and they have six flights a day on a Saturday to Gatwick. And therefore, to me, that supports the tourist industry. And they... Uh, in most probably July and August, they'll get twice as many passengers going to and from Gap because the Isle of Man does. And to me, that can only be a good thing. I mean, they some people take a view that the actual company loses money, but my view would be there must be behind that those additional fifteen thousand passengers a month must be generating revenue for the island. It's quite controversial though, having governments owning airlines. I mean, well, know. they're not kind of seen to go to the airline well, <laughs> through the back door. Yes, and, and I, it's like one of those things. I do get that, and a decision as to whether to go down that path would be a huge one. And again, you'd have a lot of people would be really against it because it's quite expensive to set up. Uh, from a long-term point of view for Isle of Man PLC, then I wouldn't be against it. And like I said, one of the things that, again, we were looking at is to try and set up an airline. I mean, I've been in contact with a few different people with a view, but it was a long-term project and we had actually already discussed it, maybe setting something up at the end of the year. But obviously this event kind of put that on the backbone, even though we weren't against if somebody had come in and said, OK, then... If you want to have it, how much money do you need? And let's go ahead and do it. And since you had to pull the plug, did you get any last minute offers that which were too late in the end? Yeah. <laughs> you did. I have had somebody who I've spoken. It's like one of those things. I always knew at some stage I would meet somebody that had said we wouldn't have had a problem. Only had no own, yeah. need the money in time. So it's just, it was just timing. It was just pure timing. And we thought, to be fair, 
we didn't want to just drag it on and on and on. I mean, like I said, we were losing quite a bit of money a day. And our first thought was to look after the Isle of Man public and make sure there was still a service because businesses relied on what we delivered. If we'd been a company not based on the Isle of Man, then potentially you'd find that they'd have just cancelled the flights. And then, like I said, they, they don't really care because the Isle of Man's not their bread and butter. Of course, you're one of the few that had the aircraft were based here. Of course, that's mm. another thing, isn't it? When yeah. other airlines don't come in, then no one's going to go out. Mm. Whereas this is more a question of you're here in the first place. And so the reality is, is that for any company, I guess, that flies here, there's no commitment because within two weeks, you can actually, you're actually going to stop a route anyway. Really? Two weeks? Yeah. And that's what some people can do. Yeah, and, have to. and they do. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for joining us today and, uh, you know, hope you get something sorted out soon. No, thanks very much for your time, Paul.